Hi everyone, thank you for tuning in. My name is Jocelyn Maricon Aparicio. I am a junior at Meredith College, and today I will be presenting my research study entitled Maternal Mental Health and Adverse Birth Outcomes. This study has been approved by the Institutional Review Board at Meredith College. This research study was made possible by a grant through the DuPont Foundation. I would also like to thank my research advisor, Dr. Betty Shannon Pravat. This research project would not have been possible without her continuous support and guidance throughout this entire process. First, for some background information, perinatal mood disorders or mental health complications characterized by anxiety and depression symptoms that significantly interfere with daily living and can occur during pregnancy or up to one year postpartum. In addition, prenatal mood disorders are associated with adverse pregnancy outcomes. And according to the National Perinatal Association, they affect approximately 20 to 25% of mothers. Studies have revealed race and maternal age to be established predictors of maternal health. In a study performed by Dominguez, researchers discussed the negative impact racism can have on birth outcomes, suggesting that race itself is not a predictor of birth complications, but rather how women are treated because of their race. According to this study, racism causes a buildup of stress that then leads to negative birth impacts such as low birth weight and preterm births. Additionally, maternal age is also a predictor of birth complications, as studies have shown that an increase in age is strongly correlated with increased odds of experiencing birth complications. Perinatal mental health is important during pregnancy in the postpartum period because according to Robakis and colleagues, perinatal mental health disorders are among the most common morbidities of pregnancy and maternal mortality. However, despite the high prevalence of perinatal mood disorders, not much research exists on its impact on physical health. The objective of this study was to examine if the presence of mental health symptoms, specifically of anxiety and depression, put women at a higher risk for labor complications. It was hypothesized that mental health symptoms during pregnancy will increase the risk of labor complications. This study consisted of a secondary data analysis. The medical records were obtained from a local OBJYN practice. The records contain demographic information such as mental health screening data, as well as birth information such as type of delivery, whether vaginal or a C-section, any type of complications, type of insurance, and marital status. Patients' mental health symptoms were assessed using the following measures during their prenatal screening at 28 and 36 weeks, as well as at six weeks postpartum. The generalized anxiety disorder assessment was used to measure anxiety severity. In this assessment, scores that are greater than 10 were considered significant for identifying cases of anxiety. Additionally, the patient health questionnaire was used to measure depression. In this scale, scores ranging from 15 to 19 were classified as having moderately severe depression and scores between 20 to 27 as severe depression. Edinburgh Postnatal Depression Scale was also used to assess depression. Patients who had scores from 7 to 13 were considered to have mild depression, while those with a score ranging from 14 to 30 were identified as having moderate to severe depression. For the purpose of this study, we used the highest anxiety and depression screening scores at any point during the pregnancy period. This allowed us to accurately capture the greatest severity of symptoms that the participants experience. The medical records consisted of 4,323 participants. We used the SPSS software to run descriptive statistics on the study participants. There was a large range in maternal age with 15 being the youngest and 57 the oldest. The mean was 31.06, making the average maternal age 31. We also identified a large racial gap. The majority of participants were non-minorities, with 74.6% of participants identifying as white or European and just 25.4% belonging to the minority group. The minority group consisted of Black or African American, Hispanic, Asian, American Indian or Alaska Native, Native Hawaiian, 
or Pacific Islander. We use a logistic regression analysis and focus on the first pregnancy, regardless of the presence of complications or not, for patients who delivered from January 2015 until December 2020. Additionally, we looked at the effect of demographic variables, such as age and race, in the first step of the model. On the second step, we examined the effect of mental health symptoms and then analyzed their effect on labor complications. Mental health symptoms were those of anxiety and depression identified during pregnancy based on the Edinburgh Postnatal Depression Scale, the Generalized Anxiety Disorder Assessment, and the Patient Health Questionnaire Total Scores. When we ran the regression analysis in the first model, which included depression with demographic variables, 337 selected cases were identified. We found that there was a correlation between maternal age and depression. However, the model showed that highest prenatal depression scores were not a significant predictor of birth complications, given that the p-value was 0.852, which is greater than 0.05. Additionally, when we ran the regression model using the highest prenatal anxiety scores, 50 cases were identified. This analysis revealed anxiety as a significant predictor of labor complications. The p-value of the model with anxiety scores predicting labor complications was 0 0.019, much smaller than 0 0.05, representing a strong significance. The odds ratio suggests that if you are a racial minority, you are 7.7 times more likely to experience labor complications. Additionally, for each increasing score on the anxiety scale, women are 1.3 times more likely to also experience labor complications. Labor complications generally reflected women who experienced preeclampsia, placenta previa, and premature labor, among other complications. So for implications, findings are important because they emphasize the importance of including an anxiety scale when performing prenatal screenings, given that anxiety is a significant predictor of labor complications. Oftentimes, moms are screened mostly for depression. However, depression was not shown to be a predictor of birth complications. The typical screenings, such as the Edinburgh Postnatal Depression Scale, do not identify anxiety. So it is important to include measures such as the Generalized Anxiety Disorder Assessment in prenatal screenings. It is important to identify cases of anxiety in pregnant women early on in their pregnancy to be able to intervene and provide moms with the resources they need in order to decrease their odds of having birth complications. These findings also help solidify the connection between physical and mental health, suggesting that mental health does have an effect on physical health. A limitation in this study was that although we had a large sample, the subset of that sample that actually included prenatal scores was much smaller. For example, since women are not typically screened for anxiety, only 50 cases out of 4,323 total participants were identified. Additionally, the population in this study was primarily white or of European descent. Therefore, the study does not truly capture the effect of mental health symptoms among those in the minority race group. Additionally, although this study identified anxiety as a significant predictor of labor complications, future research should examine to what extent anxiety impacts labor complications. Studies should also look at how mental health affects expectant moms who belong to a minority race. And these are the sources that I used. If you have any questions, here's my contact information. And again, I am Jocelyn Merrigan. Thank you so much for listening.